I'm Mara De Matteo and today I will be making a jam crostata. It will be a crostata di frutta, which is a very simple but delicious Italian dessert. The first thing we do, we take some flour, about two cups of flour approximately. Now remember, I make simple things. I don't have all the time in the world to make this wonderful dishes, so I try to make simple things that taste delicious. And like if, if you took forever to make it, but this one definitely you do not take forever to make it. Okay, so two cups of flour in here. Then we're going to take a, just like a pinch of salt, a little bit of sugar, it's two tablespoons of sugar, throw them in there. Now we're going to get, um, mix it all up like this to make sure that the sugar spreads evenly. Then I'm going to take the butter, which I've cut up. It's about 10 tablespoons of butter. They're cut up in little pieces. It's unsalted butter because it's always better, so you can control the salt. Okay, so we throw the butter in there. And then what do you do? You use your hands to prepare the dough. Yes, you could put it in a food processor. Of course you could. There's the food processor waiting. But you know what? That's a lot of work to clean that food processor. I much prefer to do it by hand. It's very quick. And it comes out beautiful. And that's the way my mother made it. My mother made this by hand. As a matter of fact, my mother would use the board to put uh, the, the flour and the rest of the stuff on it. She would not put it in, in, a, in a bowl. She just put it right on the board, which was not a marble board. It was like a, a wooden board, very large, called a tagliere in Italian. And uh, she would use all that also to make pasta sometimes. She would make tortellini, so she would roll out the pasta, the dough on that. Now, here we are. With my fingers, the best thing you have, the best tool, your hand. Break it up. Break it up. Don't put it right in your palm. Just you try to use your fingers in a less half than your hand. And break it up and, uh, you know, until it forms some kind of crumbs. Don't go crazy. Now, this is pasta frolla, which is Italian pastry dough. It's it's like the equivalent of the French pot sucre, but it has um, eggs in it. And the eggs are going in right now. Actually, I use, this is my mother's recipe, so I'm following the, her instructions. She used egg yolks. Why egg yolks instead of eggs? Just the whole eggs? Because it, it makes the pastry a little more tender. Here I have about four tablespoons of white wine, which I throw in, and then I start mixing. That's all. Very simple. I'm going to start mixing this up like this. And if the dough should be a little dry as you mix it, don't worry. This dough is very, very forgiving. It does not drive you crazy when you roll it out. It's pretty simple. So what you do, you can add a little bit of milk, which I prepared here, just a little bit to give it a little more moisture. And then you keep mixing until you know, it starts gathering together and you can make um, a patty, or actually I make two patties. My mother used to make a lot of simple cakes. My mother was not a pastry chef, obviously. She loved to cook and bake, but she didn't have that much time. So what did she make? When she has some time, usually on weekends, she would make some plain cakes, like a part of the which is a delicious cake made with potato starch. It makes it slight as a feather and lovely flavor with vanilla. She would make orange cake, which was very simple, pan di spagna, sometimes a marmo dolce, which is like a marble cake. Again, very homey cake. Here, look how nicely this is coming together right now. Beautiful. But when she made the crostata, which is a tart, we were very happy because, you know what else we like to do? We used to take little pieces of the dough and we would eat it, and we would sneak it. Okay, you can do that these days because of all the fear of salmonella. Even though in Italy they tell me there's no such thing, at least for the, from the eggs. So I don't recommend this. But, you know, when we were growing up, we were taking a little pieces of dough and uh, taking little bites of it. Anyway, here it is. Look at this. Done. The dough is perfect. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut it into two different parts. Because I want to make one for the, the bottom of the tart, and the other one I want to use to cut the strip. So approximately this much, okay, more or less. Again, nothing very precise here. This is not French classic patisserie. So I take two pieces of dough, and what I will do, I'll wrap them in a plastic wrap and refrigerate them to let them rest. 
Okay, now I have here some dough that is already rested. And here it is. Okay, let me just put this here. Okay. Dough that is already rested. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the on um, the board right here. Okay, so, and I take the largest piece of dough. So here we go, like this. A little bit of flour on the, on the, the bottom and the top so we can roll up. Now, look at my collection of rolling pins right here, okay? This is a beautiful French silk pen made by the same people who made the silk pad pad. This is non-stick. I love it. It's red. It's my favorite color. That's why I like to use this. This is an Italian one, which is a traditional Italian rolling pin. Also, I love this. And this is an American one made of marble. Very heavy and, and stable. Also beautiful. Now, I like to use the red one because it's my favorite. But you can use whatever rolling pin you have. Just stir it gently, gently, and say this. Okay? Okay, so you go on. And you make it round. Don't go crazy if it's not perfectly round. Actually, it does not have to be perfectly round. We're making a rustic tart. We are not making a very complicated one. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. And as I said before, this dough is very, very um, forgiving. So just you know, take your time, roll it out, try to make it even, and always keep a little bit of flour on it. Not too much, otherwise, it gets a little tough, but uh, you know, just a little bit. Here we go. It's starting to come round. Do you want to make a circle of about about 12 inches? It does not have to be. It can be a little less, a little more. Now, my mother did not bother with with measuring anything, and she did not use the tart pan that I have here, which is a tart pan that I have um, covered with butter. I mean, I spread with butter so the the dough will not stick. This is about a 10 inch. 11, 10 and a half inch star pan. Now my mother would just use a simple aluminum uh, pan which high, with higher sides. It was not meant for anything, but she would make most of her cakes in that, tarts included. And you know, the tarts, if she couldn't take it out, she would serve it out of it. But usually she was able to take it out. It's coming out very nicely. Um, I had uh, to have, uh, after I'm gonna have an egg wash, an egg wash, uh, like a little, bit, like I take a little bit of an egg and I put it in a little container, and uh, I beat it with a little bit of uh, with a fork, and that will give it some uh, uh, some shine. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is just about ready. Actually, this right now. With, this is an important tool. I love gadgets. Okay. I have a lot of them because I like them. They're not all necessary. This is one of the ones that is necessary. It's called a uh, bench knife in professional kitchen or a pastry cutter or something. But you know, you want to loosen it up a little bit. Just loosen it up so that you can pick it up and put it in a pan. Uh, an egg. Um, here we go. Now I'm going to take this and Okay. Perfect. Look at this. Sometimes it breaks. It's okay. It's not a big deal. For now, we're just doing this and um, arranging it nicely. If you get holes, it doesn't matter. You can take off the excess. You can fold it over a little bit so that it gives a little more stability when you take it out because you're going to take this out of the pan and you want it to be uh, you know, sturdy enough so it does not fall apart. Egg. Um, uh, yes. After I take the egg and I'm going to put it in a little container and beat it with a fork a little bit, and uh, that's what will make the egg wash for this cake. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. <laughs> yes, I love the way it's coming out. So this is actually one of the best ones I've ever made. That's so good because I'm doing it for this video, so it's coming out perfect. I love it. Look at this. This is a beautiful, beautiful bottom of a tart. Now, usually I refrigerate it a little bit to make sure that uh, it, it gets a little cooler so it holds up better. Now, what I would normally do, I'm going to take a cookie sheet, okay? 
going to be a little messy, but don't worry, it's okay, we'll clean it up. Take a cookie sheet, like a large cookie sheet, I cover it with a sheet of foil, and then I put this in here. And I'm going to put it aside, and I'm going to roll out the other dough. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, so rolling this out. Now, the best jam to use for this, in my humble opinion, is is a jam made of cherries. La marmellata di ciliegie. Ciliegie are cherries. So that's really the best thing to use because I happen to love cherries. And also because it's one of the most traditional ones. Another very traditional one is uh, Africa jam because it's also very much used, especially in northern Italy. My mother is from northern Italy, so in the city of Modena. So she made some of the traditional um, specialties from the area, the region of Emilia Romagna, which is the first re region in northern Italy. Okay, this is coming out very nicely. So because I'm very fond of cherry jam, I will uh, use that. You can use apricot or you can use whatever you like. This is completely up to you. I like to stick with traditional, so what I, I grew up with. I like this thing. I wanted to make it cool so the way my mother made it as possible because I'm building my own traditions here based on the old ones, you know, with my little touches, my little changes. But here we are, almost ready. This is good enough, but I'm going to make it a little bit larger just to make sure that the strips reach across. Again, we are totally relaxing about this. Even if the strips break when you put them on, it's okay. It's not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. Because this is supposed to be rustic. It's not supposed to be fussy. Okay. I think this is ready. Let's see. Do this. Let's do this. Okay. Um, you know, what you want to do is make sure that it's picked up from the center so that when you cut it with a pastry wheel, it does not um, stick to the, the board and it'll be difficult to uh, pick up. Okay, so now just make some nice strips. Make some nice thick ones. I like thick ones. It, it looks more rusting and homey. You can make them thinner if you want, but whatever. Now this is very, very free, completely open, up to you. I like to use um, the scalapuya because it's much prettier, but you can use a plain one like a pizza cutter would do. Again, not a big deal. Here we go. Okay, we cut the strip. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to uh, put the jam in the uh, in the tart pan. So I'm going to switch things around a little bit. Okay, this is heavier than I thought. Here we go. Let's do this. Now, you can use any kind of jam. As I said, I like cherry. I have this delicious French jam. And I just put it right in. That's all. Now, I use an entire jar. And as a matter of fact, I would prefer to use even more than this. But you know, that's, that, this is what I have right now. I like a thicker tart, but more, really traditionally it's supposed to be very close to the crust. You know, just a little bit of jam. I like a little more because I have a sweet tooth and I love it. Look at this. Can you see how beautiful it's coming out? The shiny, shimmering, dark red of the cherries of this really good quality jam. You've got to use good quality jam. My mother used to use Cirio, which is a famous brand in the Naples area, international also. But uh, especially, it comes from that area, so it's really high quality product. They also make tomatoes, you know, all sorts of preserves and things. But she used to use a Cirio, a cherry jam, or apricot. Another jam that is used in, in Italy, especially in northern Italy, is a sour cherry jam, Amarene. Amarene, al very, very good. They're a little brownish in color when they're fresh, but they make wonderful jams. But uh, it's a little more difficult to find in America, so I use a cherry jam. Okay, now this is good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to rearrange things a little bit so that I can um, put the stripes 
so on the on the gen um, start. So let's see how we're gonna work this out. Okay, let's pull this down a little bit. Okay, that's it. Very simple. Okay, so now we're gonna start picking them up. Be very gentle. If you feel that it's not coming off well, just you know, put a little bit of this uh, blade underneath. And then we'll pick it up a little bit, and then we'll make it a little easier. If it breaks, don't worry about it. It's okay. Now look at this. I'm putting it right here. Okay, just like that. And you go like this, and like this. Okay, now another one. Take it. Another stripe, or strip, I should say. And you put it right here. Okay. Beautiful. Attach them. That it's important that you attach them. Otherwise, as they cook, they're going to fall apart. You don't want that to happen. Okay. Now let's get more. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to put. Now you know what? That is long, so I'm going to put that across. This I'm going to put right here. Okay. Now you can put uh, three. You can put four. It doesn't really matter. Let's see. I think this is good like this. It's not perfectly even, but it's okay. Now, you put this diagonally because it looks better if you do this. Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to take another one. Look how nicely it's coming along. With very little effort. Isn't this the easiest thing in the world? Very little effort. And it makes a delicious, the delicious dessert, which you can have... In the morning for breakfast, I like sweets for breakfast. I'm Italian. That's what people do in Italy. They have very little breakfast. With a little cafe latte or, or espresso, I have espresso. And a little sweet. Very simple. Okay, now what I'm going to do is this. This you can save. Okay, you, it's extra dough. You can make a few cookies out of it. Roll them out and it will be lovely. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I have to make yes, uh, this here. I'm going to break this egg and I'm going to make a little bit of uh, egg wash simply by using uh, just an egg, nothing else. I don't have anything else in I just just mix it up. Now with a little brush you pick this up and you do this right over it. Right over it. Gently, gently, gently. You don't want to break it. Now, do the, the strips of dough, do not do the edge, okay? The edge will automatically brown just from being in that position, just from being in the, around, the, around the tart, because that part uh, bakes a lot faster. So you just use this for the strip, just to help a little bit to get a little color, a little tang. And you will see when it comes out of the oven how shimmery and bubbly and lovely it is. And that's pretty much it. We're almost done here. This is very, very easy. Okay. The start is now ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to put this aside. And I'm going to show you what happens after the tart has been in the oven for about 35 minutes at 375 degrees. I have the oven heating. And when you take it out, that's what you get. This is the tart. Here it is. Isn't it beautiful? It's a beautiful tart made with cherry jam. The crust brown nicely all around by itself. And now for a finishing touch, very European, you've got to put some powdered sugar on it. It makes it look a little more elegant. Here we go. Crostata di marmellata finita. Buon appetito.